how to run Google ads for your pressure washing, window cleaning, or gutter cleaning business. Stick around and watch the whole video because I'm going to be sharing a lot of tips, tricks, and secrets that a lot of you don't know about Google ads so you can convert more customers and start getting leads by tomorrow. Let's jump right into the video. All right, it's time to create our first ever campaign. So click on this button here where it says new campaign. Now what you want to do is just fill out whatever your business name is. For this example, we're just going to do a window cleaning business. Fill out your website address here and then tap on next. The campaign objective that we want is leads because we want people to either call us or fill out our form submissions. And then the type of campaign that we want will be a search campaign. The way we want to reach our goal is website visits. It should automatically add in your website address again here. Now we just want to name our campaign. I like to name this whatever service you're selling and whatever type of campaign it is. So for this instance, we're going to go with window cleaning, which is the service and then search, which is the type of campaign that we're running. Now, if you're a brand new Google Ads account and you've never ran a Google Ads campaign before, you'll probably have this text in the setup, which is choose your leads conversion goals. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that we click form submissions from your website because we want to be driving the traffic directly to our website and having them convert on our website. Now, just go over here and tap on continue. Now we're on to our bidding. So the conversion goal that we want is maximize clicks and you want to set a maximum cost per click. For the moment, we're just going to set this as $6. I'm going to show you later on the video exactly how you can figure out your maximum cost per click. But for right now, it doesn't matter. Now, just unclick search network and display network. These are really good for wasting your budget and they're really hard to track. So I wouldn't bother wasting any of your time or money on these. There's more than enough traffic on Google itself. Right now, let's do the location. So the easiest way to do this is click enter another location. Tap on advanced search, just type in your zip code or postcode depending on what country you're in and then click target. So this just makes it a lot easier and it takes you directly to your location. Now, if you want to target per postcode, which is what I recommend, just tap show all areas and then you can tap on every individual postcode and target them. It takes a little bit longer, but it's definitely better because you can increase or decrease bids based on these postcodes or zip codes. But if you want to be lazy, you can just flick it over to radius like I did. You can change this from miles to kilometers. And then you want to tap on pin mode, tap on target. And then as you can see here, we've targeted this radius. Now you can change this over here on the left. Just tap on the little pencil. Now, once we've done that, we just want to tap save. Now you want to go down here to the location options. Make sure you tick presence, people in or regularly in your targeted location. Now we want to go down to audience segments. Now this is very important. Do not skip this step. So you want to go through here and you want to click on each and every single one of these. Now the reason why you want to do this is because you can increase or decrease bids based on these audience segments. So let's just say we've got 90 days worth of data. We can increase the bids on the audiences that are converting best and we can decrease the bids on the audiences that are costing too much. Now, I'm not going to tap on all of these right now because this is just an example campaign. But the last thing is you want to make sure that this is on observation mode, not targeting. Now, if you scroll down to more settings, you can put in your ad schedule here. So just say you only want to accept inquiries Monday to Fridays from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, there's also this more settings area. You don't really need to change anything here. I wouldn't bother about it. I just go to the next page. Now we're at the ad group level. Just exit out of all this stuff because we're going to create the ad ourselves. For this instance right now, we're going to do keyword research later on the video. So you may as well just put in one keyword here. So just something that somebody would look up when they're looking for your particular store or service. And then we'll move on. Now we'll just scroll down into creating the ad. All right. So the main parts of an ad are the descriptions and the headlines. So I'm just going to quickly put in one of my favorite ones, which is a keyword insertion. So what this does is it changes the headline depending on what search term they actually searched up on their end. So if your potential client looked up window cleaner near me, it would actually change the headline of your ad to window cleaner near me. This just makes it a whole lot more relevant and relevance is key when it comes to Google ads. You want to be exactly what they're searching for. Now, this is just an example ad, so I'm just going to give you example headlines. I'm not actually going to build you out a full ad. You can also pin in the headlines from first position to third. This just means that your headline will be forced into that position. So if I pin one in first, every single time that ad appears, that will always be the first headline that they see. Now, these are really great for doing split tests. It does change the ad strength down to poor most of the time, but ad strength is completely irrelevant, so don't worry about that. 
Now, if you're struggling a lot to figure out what type of headlines and descriptions you should be using, just go on Google search, search up whatever somebody would search to find your business and have a look at your competitors' ads. Just write down all of the headlines that you see because there's a lot of really good ones here. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to steal any part of somebody else's ad, but in industries like window cleaning and most industries out there, there's only so many headlines that you can use. For example, window cleaning near me, window cleaning service, window cleaning at location. See, most of the people that are targeting these areas will have the same headlines or similar headlines. This is because most of the people in that area are searching for that particular service or store. So it's not that big of a deal if you steal those. But just make sure that you don't steal the descriptions because the descriptions are the things that make you different from someone else. And that's where you can really sell them on your service rather than another service. Now, after you've created all of your descriptions, this is exactly what it will look like. The blue text at the top is the headlines and below that is the descriptions. Now you can also add in your business name. You just need to verify your business. Eventually you have to do this regardless, but it's best that you just get this out of the way now. Otherwise, Google will stop your ads in the future if you haven't done the verification. I'll put up two different examples on the screen for you now so you can see what I'm talking about. But this is really simple and easy to do, so you may as well just get this out of the way now. Now we're going to jump onto site links, and I'm going to show you how these work. So just tap Create. This is where you can make different links to different parts of your website. These are really good if you sell multiple services. The best way to use these is to link them to social proof, like check out our reviews or check out our work and other ones like call to actions, like contact us now, just something to get them to take action. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go through and show you some of the examples of these. So you can see here, you can see here, it's the blue writing right at the bottom of the ad. So these are all the different site links. Now these will show up differently depending on what device you're searching on and when you search it up. Sometimes the site links appear differently and I'm going to show you another example here. As you can see right here, these site links take up so much digital real estate and it makes the ad so big. I want this to be the case because if somebody searches up on their phone and all the site links are like this, it covers practically the whole phone screen. And that's exactly what you want. Now let's add in some call outs. These are short little punchy things that you put at the end of your descriptions. Personally, I like to have about two of these. If you have four, it gets a little bit too much. These ones don't make a whole lot of a difference, but they're nice to reiterate some of the primary points like free quotes, online estimates, contact us, $50 off, just anything you can really put in there that will persuade them that little bit more. Jump out of here and we'll go down to asset types. You can go and click on promotions. So if you're running a promotion, you can add it in here. So you can add these in for certain time periods. So it only goes for a certain amount of time and it will pop up as an extension down the bottom of your ad. Now these won't show up every time your ad shows up. That's why I usually put the promotions in the actual ad itself. The most important thing we wanna be doing here is adding in our phone number as a cool extension on our ad. Now it's the same thing as before. It won't show up every single time somebody sees your ad, but a lot of the time it will show up and people will call you directly from your ad instead. So you just wanna fill out this as the example below. So you put the area code in brackets. For me, I'm just gonna type in any random number this is an Australian phone number example, so it might be different for USA, but when you switch it over to USA, it'll have a USA example. Now you can also add in a schedule for when this cool extension shows. So most people put this in because they don't wanna be getting called before 9 a.m. in the morning, or maybe after 5 p.m. if you only wanna accept calls within those working hours. Now we've done that, just tap on next, and now we'll go figure out our budget. Just click on set custom budget, because we don't wanna use any of Google's recommendations, they just want you to spend as much money as possible. And all the examples that they give below are all completely irrelevant. But for this campaign, let's just say we're doing $15 per day. Personally, I wouldn't go anything lower than that. If you are a new account, you'd probably want to start around $30 a day if you've got an all right budget and bring in a little bit of data. And then once you find a winning ad, start scaling from there. Now you may get this warning up the top left and it's about your bidding strategy. Don't worry about this. Google's just trying to force you to be on maximized conversions, but we don't want this right now because we have no conversion data in our account. Now let's just double check everything, go down to the bottom, tap publish campaign and bang, you've created your first ever Google ads campaign, but we're not done just yet. Now we've got to go over to tools on the left side and go to planning, then keyword planner. So this is where we're going to figure out what keywords to bid on and what our maximum cost per click will be. Click on discover new keywords, go down to location, change this location to your city or town, whatever it is. It just needs to be a big enough area close to you so it has the data. So we're just gonna do the actual city right now. 
Now, what you want to do is you just want to type in whatever you think somebody would type in to find your business. So I'm just going to type in multiple keywords. It just helps when you do it like this. So I'm going to type in window cleaning, window cleaning service, window cleaning near me. These are the typical type of searches that somebody would type in when they're trying to find a window cleaning business. Now that you've done that, click on get results. Now what you want to do is you want to tap on average monthly searches. So the arrow is pointing down. Now this will bring up the ones with the highest search volume per month. Now just drag this across so we can see the full keywords. And you can do this dragging with every single column if you need to see more. Now what you want to do is you want to click on the ones that are most relevant to your business and pay attention to this, the top of the page bid low range and high range. What this means is how much people are paying to appear in the top of the page of the search results. Remember this because we're going to use it later on the video to calculate our maximum cost per click. Now here's a good example of what I mean by top of the page bid. This is what you're bidding for to appear in the top three to four results. And if you're not hitting the minimum top of the page bid range on the low end, you'll appear down here where nobody really looks. Now let's go through and pick our keywords. Now just keep this simple. You don't want to overthink this. Just click on any of the keywords that are relevant to your business. Once you've done all that, just have a quick little look through all of the top of the page bid high ranges and then click on copy. Then click on audience keywords and content. Click on search keywords, tap the little blue plus button and then just paste all the keywords that you just copied. Now, Google has this little recommendation tab on the right side. Just go through here, find any more that are relevant for your business as well. Now, if you accidentally double up and you have two of the same keywords, don't worry, Google will just make it as one keyword. After you've done that, tap save, click this little box, tap on edit. We're changing all the broad to phrase. Hover over the change all match types, then select change all match types. Now switch it over to phrase match. Perfect, now all the keywords are phrase match. Now let's tap on negative keywords. Tap the plus sign. Here's some examples of what you want to put in here. Competitor names, product names, suppliers, questions, sale related terms if you're a service based business and job related search terms because we're not looking to hire anyone. Now just tap save. All right, so now we want to set our maximum cost per click. Click campaigns, click it again, hover over your campaign and click the settings icon. Click on bidding and change your maximum cost per click. For me, I'm just going to put it at $9 for this example. Now tap save. All right, so how I figure out what my maximum cost per click is, is I go through all of the keywords that I selected and I average out the top of the page bid high range. So let's just say, for example, on average, it was $10 for the top of the page bid high range. So generally speaking, you either cap it at the $10, so you just cap it at whatever the average top of the page bid high range is, but for me personally, I like to bid about 70% of what it is. So for example, I would make this $7 if that was my average. I've just noticed that this is the best way to start off a Google Ads campaign to be as profitable as possible. And if you aren't getting the traction that you want, you can just increase the bid. But generally speaking, if this is a brand new Google Ads account and you're starting on a low budget, it's always best to start like this. Now tap on campaign, click on it down here. It'll take you to the ad group level. Then click on ads, tap this box, click edit, Go to copy, deselect the box and click paste. Tap the campaign, then tap the ad group and then click done. Select the second option and click paste. Tap on the pencil. Now we can create our first ever split test. So if you're completely brand new to advertising in general, this is what we call a split test. So it's where we run two different variations of the same ad, but we only change one thing. Now for this instance on Google ads, we're pinning in a headline. Now after a couple of weeks worth of data, maybe two to four weeks worth of data, we'll be able to tell whether this is a winning ad or a losing ad. So if this is a winning ad, we'll pause the previous ad that we had and we're going to duplicate the winning ad and then change one other thing. Now you wanna keep doing this constantly throughout your Google Ads experience to keep finding better and better ads. This will greatly increase your conversion rate and overall drop down how much you're paying to get clients. So you wanna be doing this constantly. Once we load in, I'll pin the keyword insertion to show only in the first position. Now we just go down to save ad and that's our first split test done. All right, now you're finished. You've finally set up your first ever Google Ads campaign for your pressure washing, gutter cleaning or window cleaning business. Now, it doesn't just stop here. You need to keep optimizing the account to maximize its profitability. But stick around if you want to learn how to do all these optimization tricks and all the advanced strategies, just join our Facebook group. It's just going to be in the link in the description. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and stick around for the next one.